According to a 2013 Cochrane review, one of the most reputable sources of information modifying your diet can help lower your risk of stroke by almost 19%. Now let's discuss the top five foods to stay away from following a stroke and the reasons avoiding them can lower your risk. First though, I kindly ask you to like the video and subscribe to this channel. It is very important for us. Thank you very much. Number one, added salt. There are no surprises here. Added salt is undoubtedly bad for you. However, the fact that humans require salt to survive makes things tricky. It only becomes an issue when we consume too much of it. For instance, the average American consumes about 3,400 milligrams of sodium each day, when in fact we ought to be consuming about 2,300 milligrams, or roughly one teaspoon, of table salt each day. Thus, how does consuming too much salt impact the risk of stroke? Consider your blood arteries and heart as a plumbing system. In order to supply nourishment to your tissues and organs, your heart is constantly pumping blood via your blood vessels throughout your body. One of the following two things will cause blood pressure to rise. If there is more blood in the blood arteries, then more water is likely attempting to pass through the pipes. Alternatively, there is a constriction of blood vessels. In this case, imagine that you are attempting to force the same volume of water through narrower pipes. Salt, in fact, accomplishes both. Because water follows salt out of our cells and into the bloodstream, it instantly causes an increase in blood volume. And eventually, salt can also lead to a narrowing of the blood vessels. It can cause our blood vessels to stiffen and destroy the layer of tissue protecting them, which prevents them from dilating or growing larger. So how can you reduce the amount of additional salt in your diet? Let's concentrate on fresh foods, such as fruits and vegetables. Eat less highly processed food because it usually has a lot of additional salt. These consist of items like canned soup, frozen dinners, frozen pizza, and cured meats. Cook more often at home. When you eat at home as opposed to eating out, you have far greater control over what is in your meal. Additionally, you can reduce the amount of salt you add to your food at home by flavoring it with herbs and spices. Number 2. Added Sugar The recommended daily intake of added sugars is 10% or less, according to the CDC. Therefore, if a person followed a 2,000-calorie diet, only around 200 calories, or about 12 teaspoons, would come from added sugars. But the average adult in the U.S., takes in about 17 teaspoons of added sugar every day. Unfortunately, the majority of processed foods in the United States have a high added sugar content, which contributes to our excessive consumption in sugar. Finding something without added sugars or high fructose corn syrup is difficult. So why are additional sugars so unhealthy for humans and how can they raise the risk of stroke? As we've already discussed, consuming additional sugars can cause a number of health problems, including high blood pressure, which increases your chance of stroke. Inflammation, especially low-grade chronic inflammation, caused by an excess of added sugars, can also result in weight gain, obesity, and potentially autoimmune diseases. We are aware that carrying extra weight puts stress on our bodies and increases the risk of several health problems, including stroke. Type 2 diabetes can also result from consuming an excessive amount of added sugars. This condition is known as insulin-resistant diabetes, which indicates that insulin, the hormone that aids in blood glucose regulation, is still being produced by your body, but the insulin isn't getting into your cells to complete its work. Thus, blood sugar, also known as blood glucose, builds up in the blood and eventually causes a variety of problems. How then can we cut back on additional sugars in our diets? So let's start by trying not to drink your calories. Generally avoid fruit juices, sports drinks, and conventional sodas as they contain a lot of added sugar. Additionally, remember that even if you're only consuming fruit juice, you're still losing out on many advantages that come with eating a regular fruit on its own, such as fiber. And secondly, you should steer clear of the more obvious foods. Steer clear of desserts like cookies and pastries that have a lot of added sugar. Number 3. Saturated Fat Consumption of fat and the risk of stroke has long been debated. Nonetheless, 
the American Heart Association continues to advise consuming only 5 to 6% of our daily calories from saturated fats. This is due to their propensity to increase LDL, or bad cholesterol, which may have an impact on the risk of stroke and heart disease development. Nonetheless, a study that examined the connection between saturated fat and the risk of stroke was conducted in 2021. They discovered that the factors that actually affect the risk of stroke are the type of fat and its origin. They discovered that there was a greater risk of stroke in people who consumed more animal fat from non-dairy sources. The risk of stroke was decreased in those who consumed more veggies and unsaturated fats. Therefore, there was no overall study finding that consuming saturated fat increased the risk of stroke. The researchers did, however, acknowledge the need for additional research. They needed to evaluate dairy, vegetable, and animal sources of saturated fat to see if saturated fats increase stroke risk. What then is the broader lesson about saturated fats and stroke risk? Avoiding too much saturated fat is probably still a good idea. Maintain a 5-6% to daily calorie allowance as advised by the American Heart Association, AHA, as it has been demonstrated to elevate low-density lipoprotein, LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease and stroke. You might concentrate particularly on cutting back on animal products' saturated fats, particularly those found in red meat. Eat lots of unsaturated fats, such as those found in plants, nuts, seeds, and vegetables. A balanced diet nevertheless need fat. Number 4. Red and Processed Meat Red meat has long been linked to diabetes, heart disease, and various types of cancer. According to a 2017 meta-analysis that was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, eating more red meat increased the risk of stroke by 11%. The risk of stroke increased by 177% when processed meat was consumed, and eating white meat resulted with a 133% lower risk of stroke. How is the risk of stroke increased by red meat? Red meat's increased saturated fat content is thought to be the cause, as it can boost blood levels of triglycerides and low-density lipoprotein, LDL, which increases the risk of stroke. This results in the accumulation of plaque in our blood vessels, clogging the arteries. It might imply that blood flow to a particular area of the brain, or perhaps the heart is reduced, or that a fragment of the plaque could break off and form a clot in another area of our body. Hemi iron, another substance found in red meat, is thought to trigger oxidative processes. And these oxidative processes harm the building components of our cells, which may result in problems with the heart and nervous system. Thus, how do processed meats raise the risk of stroke? Since the word sodium implies salt, they are usually produced using the preservative sodium nitrate. This preservative in particular has the potential to raise blood pressure, which raises our risk of stroke. How then does white meat lower the risk of stroke? In addition to having less heme iron than red meat, it also includes polyunsaturated fats, which have been demonstrated to lower bad cholesterol, or LDL. What lesson may be learned from this on consuming less red and processed meat? Steer clear of or consume them in moderation, especially hot dogs, pepperoni salami, and beef. Instead of eating more red meat, aim to consume more white meat, such as chicken and turkey. And perhaps even arrange to eat a vegetarian meal once a week. Number 5. Alcohol I understand that some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute. I have heard that some level of alcohol can actually be protective against stroke risk. However, I did come with a more recent study, a sizable global research, that had some quite intriguing results and was published in the Neurology Journal in 2023. According to that study, a high alcohol consumption was linked to a higher risk of hemorrhagic and ischemic strokes. Moreover, it was discovered that a moderate alcohol consumption did not reduce the risk of stroke. Additionally, they discovered that the kind of alcohol consumed mattered. Beer and spirits like vodka, for instance, were shown to raise the risk of stroke. However, it has been discovered that wine drinking actually lowers the incidence of ischemic stroke. It should be noted, though, that the researchers acknowledged that they weren't certain if the increase in physical activity among wine drinkers was the only reason for it or if other factors also played a role. 
Thus, how can drinking raise the risk of stroke? We have discussed high blood pressure a little bit, and this is one of its causes. Excessive consumption of it can result in weight gain, obesity, and type 2 diabetes, particularly if you're consuming a lot of sugar-filled beverages. Additionally, it may cause other cardiac arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation, which are known to have underlying risk factors for stroke. Moreover, it may conflict with prescription drugs, especially those that are intended to help avoid stroke. How can one cut back on alcohol consumption? Initially, see your physician to confirm if this is the appropriate course of action for you. Possibly wait to start drinking if you don't already. If you're more of a light drinker, consider choosing wine over beer or liquor. Additionally, if you drink a lot, discuss measures to reduce your intake with your doctor. If you drink alcohol to relax, you might want to look into healthier options to find a different way to unwind than drinking. Okay, that's all from me for now. Tell me in a comment if there are any foods you were advised not to eat following your stroke. As usual, please click the bell to receive notifications when I upload new videos, subscribe to the channel, and give a like if you found this video helpful. Without all of you, we could not do what we do. I appreciate everyone who watched, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.